Hey guys, James again with TFB TV. Now, those of you that read our mother blog, the firearmblog.com, you may have seen a few articles lately that have been the top blank guns of 2017. And that's a new thing for us. Over the past 10 years, we've actually never done a roundup like a best guns of whatever year it is for that respective year. So we wanted to try that this year because those tend to be pretty popular articles and videos. And so this is going to be our first shot at it at TFB TV, and that is the top five guns of 2017. Let's launch right into our number five, the Savage MSR. So it was tough putting the Savage on this list. First reason, Vista Outdoor is Savage's parent company and they're one of our sponsors. So I like to avoid the appearance of impropriety, but also you're talking about an AR-15 and people are so sick and tired of AR-15s and it's like, what's this? A new AR-15? Who cares, right? I got to spend a lot of time with the Savage MSR through 2017, both in the 308 and the 556 configuration and in spite of the fact that I really didn't want to have a sponsored gun on this list, and in spite of the fact that I didn't want to have another AR-15 on this list, hear me out because there are some really innovative features in the MSR that made it an appropriate contender. One of the first things about the MSR is it's not just another M forgery, right? It's not another 16 inch M4 copy, one in seven twist that may or may not be mil spec with a carbine length gas system, just another copy of the Colt 6920. And while it isn't a Colt 6920 copy, it does share a lot of the same features that you would want from the Colt 6920, including mil spec guts. You've got a mil spec M16 bolt carrier group that's got a staked gas key, magnetic particle inspected bolt, they stake the castle nut on the receiver. It uses a mil spec trigger group and some of its base models, except it's boron coated, so they call it the mil spec plus trigger. But that's where the similarities end because the MSR integrates actually a lot of features that you see on more boutique style rifles that you don't necessarily see on M forgeries or mil spec guns. First, let's talk about the barrel. You're talking about a melanite barrel instead of chrome lined. That is a one in eight twist and it uses 5R rifling instead of standard lands and grooves rifling. So what does all that mean? Well, 5R rifling is a form of rifling where the lands are opposed to the grooves instead of lands facing lands and grooves facing grooves as you find in conventional rifling. This reduces bullet deformation and it makes the barrel easier to clean. So it's easier to maintain and it's a little bit more accurate. Melaniting is actually a surface treatment that hardens the barrel steel it makes the barrel a lot harder, and it doesn't alter the surface dimensions, unlike chrome lining. It's also a one and eight inch twist barrel, which is what you typically see on match grade stainless steel barrels. And it really splits the difference between the more common one and nine inch twist on the commercial guns and the one and seven inch twist that's a lot faster on the military grade guns. And I think it does an excellent job of stabilizing everything from 50 grain to 75 or 80 grain. So it's an excellent compromise and it's not something that you see all that often. You either get the one in nine or the one in seven. I think one in eight's a sweet spot. It uses a 223 wild chamber, which again is not common in military or commercial guns, which allows you to use 223 or 556 five, rounds all the way up to 80 grains. It also uses a mid-length gas system on its 16 inch guns, which is becoming more common the standard carbine length could tend to over gas the 16 inch barrels. So notwithstanding the fact that this is a gun that's loaded with features you don't find with off the rack AR-15s and it's a gun that'll put up one inch groups at 100 yards with the right ammo, you're looking at a street price of around $750. As far as negative things, the only negative thing that I have about the MSR is the fact that I just really don't like the Blackhawk furniture, but that's not all that big of a deal because look, most of us are gonna replace the furniture anyways, right? Now moving on to the number four gun of 2017, it's the B&T GHM-9. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, I struggled a little bit putting this one on the list too, and that's because the prototype I received had some issues. First of all, the stock wouldn't close. Second, 
it wouldn't run hollow points at all. And that is a huge deal in my opinion. But notwithstanding those negatives, it has so many positives and so much potential that it deserves a spot in the top five of 2017. I just hope B&T fixes the issues with this prototype gun for 2018 and they don't prove me wrong. First of all, you're looking at one of the highest quality pistol caliber carbines I've ever shot. The fit and finish is superb. It's a Swiss made gun. It's as good as, if not better than the MPX and certainly leaps and bounds beyond the plastic CZ Scorpion in terms of fit, finish, and overall quality. It uses an AR-15 style trigger. Geisley's making a two-stage trigger for it that's gonna be freaking incredible. Recoil is very soft. Even though it's a straight blowback gun, it uses a dual recoil spring setup with a hydraulic buffer system. Yes, magazines are 60 or 70 bucks, but they're the same B&T magazines. It uses the same pattern that you see on a lot of B&T's other pistol caliber carbines. And hopefully with B&T opening a new office in Tampa, those prices are gonna go down soon. But I like it because it's smaller and lighter than the SIG MPX or the CZ Scorpion. It's priced right at around $1,200 street price. And guys, this thing shoots and operates like a dream. It's fully ambi, you can reverse the reciprocating charging handle. It is a really nice, really well thought out gun and I was absolutely thrilled with it. You also got the ability to mount either a direct thread suppressor with a half by 28 threads or a tri-lug because it's got a tri-lug adapter, fully monolithic upper receiver with 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock and nine o'clock rail. I love the folding stock. It's a little bit dinky, but it's very lightweight, deploys easily and is surprisingly comfortable to use and again, if you're used to shooting or manipulating an AR-15, this gun's gonna be no problem for you as it uses very similar controls and a virtually identical trigger. Here's the way I see it. If the version I received could feed hollow points and if it just had a way for that collapsible stock to work, those are the only two issues I had. And B&T says they're fixing both of those right now. Assuming that gets done, I stand by my choice. The GHM-9 is the number four gun of 2017. Now moving on to number three, these two guns sneak their way and share a spot in the list just by being so damn creative. That's the Remington TAC-14 and the Mossberg Shockwave. Now for those of you who aren't really acquainted with how gun laws work here in the United States, we're not allowed to have shotguns with butt stocks if they have less than an 18 inch barrel. And then there are some funky rules about the size of a shotgun, if it has a pistol grip. Well, Mossberg and Remington kind of found the sweet spot where they have a 14 inch barrel with a 26 and a half inch overall length where it fits within the definition of a standard firearm. So you don't need an AOW stamp, you don't need a short barreled shotgun stamp, and you've got a very compact package that shoots 12 gauge shotgun shells. I reviewed the Shockwave at SHOT Show 2017, absolutely loved it, thought it was fun as heck. It shot very well, including full power 12 gauge rounds. Pete from TFB reviewed the TAC-14, did a written review, very thorough review. I suggest you go check it out if you're thinking about one of these shotguns. He did an excellent job and he absolutely loved the TAC-14. So the Shockwave and the TAC-14 get on this list just through pure creativity and by putting together a really interesting package with high quality execution and they're very inexpensive. I think you're looking at less than $400 street price. So clever guys at Mossberg and Remington, congratulations, you're number three on the list. Moving on to the number two and I hear the groans already, but I'm sorry guys, I'm sticking to my guns on this one, the Gen Five Glock 19 is the number two gun of 2017. Glock took one of the most reliable handgun designs of all time and made it even more reliable. They say that the Glock 19 and Gen 5 can go better than 30,000 rounds with better than one stoppage every 2,000 rounds. Glock listened to its consumers. They heard that people didn't like the finger grooves. So what did they do? They omitted the finger grooves. They also added the Glock Marksman barrel, which they guarantee four inch or better groups at 50 yards. They added the NDLC slide coating, which they say is their most durable coating ever. They introduced the Gen 5 19 with an ambi slide lock for the first time. It's also got the ambidextrous magazine release that's reversible. They integrated a relief cut on the front strap to make it easier to remove magazines that get jammed into your magazine well. And speaking of the magazine well, 
One of my favorite features about the Gen 5 guns is the addition of a beveled and flared magazine well. You haven't seen that on any prior iteration, and I think that is a genuine improvement that we can get really excited about. They also give you more sight options. You can get the standard plastic sights, or you can get steel iron sights, or you can get the Glock night sights, or you can get the Ameriglow Spartan contrast sights, which I love. We have the orange front and the green rear. Now, a lot of people are groaning because they say, ah, oh, Gen 5, it didn't really add anything. There was nothing new, notwithstanding the features I just mentioned. And there are a lot of people that believe that there are other guns on the market that do more, but I'm not exactly sure that that's the case. Do they need to change all that much? I was really impressed with the Gen 5 Glock 19. I know Pete was, and that's why it's number two on the list. Now, finally, the number one gun of 2017, and I almost hate to have have it on this list just because it's something that they should have thought of a long time ago. That is the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Compact 2.0. So what's the big deal with the M&P 9 Compact 2.0? Well, if you remember, the M&P Compact was truly a subcompact gun in the 1.0 iteration. It was closer to the Glock 26 in size, you were dangling a pinky, and I thought it was a fantastic gun, but you either had the compact, which was a 12 plus one, or you had the full size, which was a 17 plus one. There was nothing in between. So with the 2.0, not only did they introduce a host of features, which I'll go over in a second, but they also made the gun in the more desirable 15 plus one frame size, competing directly with the Glock 19. First of all, they lighten the trigger pull by about a pound. So instead of a seven and a half pound trigger that you found on the 1.0 or the five and a half pound trigger that you find on the performance center guns, it's right there at six and a half pounds. And I think it's slightly better than the standard Glock 19 trigger. Smith & Wesson also introduced front slide serrations. I don't think it's all that big of a deal, but a lot of people are clamoring for front slide serrations on their guns and to see them introduce it, but for Glock to continue to ignore people's calls for front slide serrations, I think that's good on Smith & Wesson. Now, one of my favorite changes to the 2.0 is the skateboard tape style texture. I like it a lot better than the ripple style texture that the Smith & Wesson M&P 1.0 guns had. I think it's a lot grippier, and I think it might be the best grip texture out there on the market today. So you have Smith & Wesson with an ambitious gun. They're coming straight for the Glock 19. They're giving the people what they want. They're offering substantial improvements over their 1.0 versus the 2.0, which is a big criticism that a lot of people had with Glock on their improvements of the Gen 4, to the Gen 5. So this is a very courageous entry for Smith & Wesson, and not only did they maybe one-up the Glock in several ways, but they also one-upped it on price because you're looking to pay about $100 less for the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact versus the Glock 19 Gen 5. Anyways, guys, that's the list. We've got SHOT Show coming up in a week. We got some really new and exciting guns. I really appreciate it. Sponsors, Ventura Munitions, ProxyBid, thank you for your continued support in 2017. We look forward to working with you guys in 2018. Thank you to you guys, viewers, subscribers, everyone. I will see you at SHOT Show.